little bit of pressure from throwing it down on your knee. Don't bang it down or else you'll end up with a nice bruise on your knee. It just allow the tines to do their work because they are actually shaped back towards your hand and holding your lock firmly we're just going to run the flicker backwards and forwards across the top of the lock and you can see how it's opened up there just on this top side so let's flick it over and you'll notice that hasn't been disturbed so we'll start just moving it backwards and forwards until we start to open it up and there's just a series of flicking it backwards and forwards moving it left and right until it opens up and this these this is these are quite thick locks so there'll be lots of spinning in it but consequently there is a little bit of flicking to go with it there we go now, if you have, like me, I have a sore wrist, you can also clamp your flicker to onto a small table or onto your kitchen table. I'd probably put something underneath it, but clamp it with on the handle. And then what you can actually do is take your lock, hold it firmly, and then you can just push it into the tines and pull it off like that. And you can see how that's opened up quite dramatically. Turn it over, push it into the tines and open it up that way. Uh, I just find that for me, I actually do it towards me like this, um, that that helps my wrist. And I can, you can see you get a very nice open effect like that. Now, what about this end? Well, this is the cut end and it's really open anyway. And what we'll find is as we draw our fibre out, see, I'm going to draw our fibre out. We'll just let the end of the fleece sit between my little finger and my ring finger. And as we pull it out, you'll just feel it sliding past each other. And it is. We're just pulling it out and it's sliding past each other. And that's exactly what we're going to do as we sit at the spinning wheel. But of course, the twist will be coming from the flyer rotating. And this will all become twisted into a single. So I've introduced Ivy to this fleece and um, she's got her little pile there that she's going to now separate the locks and so Ivy's looking for the top part the little sections and you mentioned just before that some of it looks very different yeah. than the other parts and that one might be a, a, a bit, bit big, big. Yeah. yeah and so you'd separate it probably even into three that one lovely yeah. so we were talking about the fact that um, some of the fleece looks different than other parts of the fleece and it's a bit like the hair on the back of your head is a bit different than the hair that grows from the top of your head um, and you can get those differences in um, fiber on the fleece and this bit's a bit clumpy so should I do it like that yes yeah just um, into manageable pieces and then hold it and pull it and that the reason that you're, you're doing that is so that you don't have a, you, you minimize your waste yeah so as you become more confident about um, separating the locks you'll um, you'll get a little system of your own going and some people keep these in a shoe box and um, They'll spend an evening pulling the locks out or even get somebody to help them. Your dad might help you. <laughs> <laughs> that one? Yeah. Terrific. Lovely. So Ivy's 
got her little bundle there, and you will have been given um, a vinyl apron for the class. Now, um, the part that we saw before was me with a little mat on my knee, so if you haven't got a vinyl apron, you can always put a mat on your knee, but Ivy's got uh, her apron on. And we've also given her the flicker, and so you're going to have a go at flicking the uh, a lock. And um, it's it's like anything. If you take small amounts, there's it's actually less um, effort than if you're doing it in large amount, big thick pieces. So hold the end firmly, and then that's right. Just give it, and it's really just a tap throwing your flicker onto you. That's it. And now turn your lock over and hold it firmly. And you can see already it's opening up. Yeah, it's getting a lot bigger. Yeah, and turn it over again. And just keep rotating it because the side, there you go. And hold it up to the light. And if you hold it up to the light, you can actually see whether the any bits are still glued together. Yeah. But that's, yeah. But you can, um, and or, like I said before, you can clamp your flicker to a table yeah. and pull it through. So, um, give yourself some time to get used to the flicking method. Or some people use a dog comb. That's another thing. Now, if you do use a dog comb, remember, if you've got curly hair, you'll remember your mum putting the comb in at your scalp and trying to drag it right the way through the curls to the bottom and how much it hurt. Well, if you've got a dog comb, it's the same principle as combing knotty hair. Start at the very tip and then work your way along once you've separated the tip. So have a go at, um, so is that, yeah, that's the right, the dirty end, yeah. And more of a tap down, that's it. As soon as you just yeah. tap down, it bounces back up. And, and when the tapping down actually, yep, yeah, flick it over, that's it. It's amazing, you don't think that it's doing much and then all of a sudden it's flicked out the whole lot. Yeah. It doesn't actually have to be very hard, it's just a light tap. Terrific. There you go. And if you do have some odd little bits that have, um, you know, a bit gluey just like that and mm -hmm. that one, you might want to just take it through the flicker and um, just get rid of those. Yeah. There you go. Lovely. Thank okay. You. And so, um, Philip was telling Ivy that we don't really need to flick open the cut end as we said before, because that's nice and clean and uh, will open up easily. So how's that going for you? And just be careful that you don't get your fingers with the flicker. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so it's important to hold that other end because as soon as you don't hold it, you see how it yeah. becomes disturbed yeah. and uh, then it's not as easy to spin. There you go, you've tidied it back up again. Excellent. Lovely. Okay. All right. So Ivy and I are back again to um, go over our spinning. And in actual fact, Ivy has been spinning this week and um, uh, has managed to put some fiber on two bobbins which is really terrific um so how did you find your spinning ivy lots of fun i loved it there were a few things that i found a bit hard like knowing how much to pull out of the fiber yes. and um keeping it all the same distance was very hard or the same thickness yes yeah. That will come with practice, yeah. the um, keeping it uh, the same thickness. Um, but how far to pull?
pull out how far your hand, your back hand and your front hand should, how, how far your front hand should extend out from your back hand is really governed by the length of the lock. And so with this particular fleece, we're going to fly in at the moment, I'm sorry, bumping around. With this particular fleece, um, you would never extend your front hand beyond that length because otherwise you're, you're going to create a weakness. So even though you are, um, you're pulling this first uh, lock out and it might well be there, you know really that it, it's best to keep within that distance because otherwise you start to get some weakness, yeah. you see? Yeah. Uh, and look, and that will come. That will come with practice. Everything comes with a little bit of practice. I did also, um, the other thing I found hard was when getting a new piece of the puffed out wool, trying to join it on and not make a big lump. Yes, that was quite hard. So we'll work on that today, the joining. If people find that, a lot of people go from behind and try to sort of just mush it together. <laughs> um, but you'd be surprised at how few fibers, it could be just a couple, a tiny few fibers, and to just let those join first and then extend it down. But we, we'll show a video of that, or you can take a video of me doing it for yeah. people. And, um, and yeah, so, um, so just take me through, show me um, your flicking and you've got a bobbin on there and we'll um, just check up on your spinning and see how you're going. Great. Ah, so with your flicker, mm -hmm. it's best to actually hold it like that oh. and that is, that's the action. There we go. And now turn it over. And it's several times that you turn it backwards and forwards. That's better. And turn it again. So it's it's not just you're not completing the task all on one side and then all yeah. on the other because different layers of fiber will open out with the tapping. That looks terrific. Is that done? Yes, that's just about to, lovely. That's done. Okay. It's beautiful. And so. Up. Uh, yeah, so do that one and let's have, have a look. So you've got a fairly fine leader on this wheel at the moment and you've noticed that we've changed um, Ivy over to another wheel, but it's still a double treadle, so you, you'll get the idea. And that's great, you've just extended a few mm -hmm. fibres out and the first thing to do is to treadle to build up twist, holding your leader and not letting it go on that right. Now, there you go, you, you've done it. But the pinch should have started right yeah. up where those few fibers were joined. Yeah. That's why you're getting a bit of a lump. You're doing well. Now, just don't go too far down before the uh, drafting triangle. And that's it. There you go. Shorten your backwards and forwards yeah. motion of your hand. And you are actually opening your fingers a little bit. So and what you should be doing is sliding your fingers down. That's it. That's wonderful. You've really got the action. Great. And you're sitting nice and straight. And your legs are straight. And does it feel comfortable yeah, at the wheel? Yeah, it's good. Right. Okay. That looks that looks really good. So what we'll do now is we'll show you. Uh, I'll sit at the wheel, and Ivy can show you um, how to join. And we'll join several times, and we'll take you through that. Okay. So I'm just sat at the same wheel that Ivy was, and this this is Ivy's spinning. And um, I'm just going to even it out a little bit and create a leader. Now, what I want to do is to show you how to join another lock. So here's a lock that I've already flicked. And in actual fact, I can see 
a little bit here that hasn't uh, opened up properly. So I'll just give that a couple of more taps. Preparation is key for good spinning. So once again, when you're joining, you create a little bit more twist in your leader than you normally would if you were continuously spinning. And the reason is because you want to build up that twist because you're going to let go of it and let it run into your new fiber. So here's a few fibers that I've got. I'm just going to literally just lay them on. I haven't touched it. It's, you can see it now, it's wrapped around. I'm going to move my hand up to there and let those fibers just wrap around. Now you see it started here and those few fibers have wrapped around and now I can continue that twist into the, um, into the lock. Now have you noticed, even though my lock is this long, my hand is not really extending too far back. And the one thing I haven't done is popped it through this little finger and ring finger, which will just keep those back ends nice and tidy and stop them U-shaping and coming back up to create a mess at the end. Where my eye is, is always here. Just where that I'm wiggling my index finger. And uh, sorry about the plaster on my thumb. I had a bit of an argument with a chopping knife. Okay, so it's coming up. Notice I keep brushing the fibers forward with my thumb and just extending out. So soon we'll get through that lock. This hand is holding onto the fiber very lightly and my eye is always where my thumb is tapping just there. And I'm working my way through the lock. Here we go, We're coming towards the end of it. Now, I like to spin right to the end of the lock. So I spin right to the end of the lock. Because I know then that that is the thickness that I want. I then take my next lock and I literally just tease out a few fibers and continue. So here's the end and continue to keep spinning and see how it's taken hold. So then what I'll do is I'll just pinch, let that undo a little bit pinch here and continue down. See, it's just a few hairs. And now as I come to the end of it, I'll start to pinch more to maintain that. So let's do that once more. So let's pretend that this is the end. Spin right through to the end. And I've got twist here. I'm going to tease out a few fibers. There's a little short bit there that I'll get rid of. Tease out a few fibers and just laying them on top. I don't have to touch them, you see. I can almost just, they're just wrapping around there. I'm still holding on. I bring my finger and my thumb to where those fibers have wrapped around. I let go and then just stretch a few down alongside and then start to pinch and pull out the amount of fiber that I want. And you'll get to the stage where you'll be able to do it, whoops, almost without, without stopping. So just laying it on, bringing your finger up and joining again. So we'll pretend we've come to the end, laying it on pinching and pulling down and joining again. It's not a bad idea to just spend half an hour or so, 15 minutes, just joining. 
so that it just becomes second nature and it's <laughs> it's not something you're worrying about as you come to the end of your lock now some of your fleece will look you know will have small locks and you think to yourself oh I'm forever having to come to the end of a lock you can place one lock on top of another pop it in between your uh, your little finger and your ring finger and there in the sense you've doubled the thickness of your lock yes you've got two together but see just joining pinching but they'll now behave as one lock because you put one on top of the other 